we are going to win this. We have no choice. If we don't win, I think our country is finished. I do. I believe our country is finished. And that was former President Trump last night after winning the New Hampshire primary in New Hampshire. Uh, you see him there. Uh, Trump becoming the first non-incumbent Republican candidate to win both the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primaries, where the sitting governors of both states endorsed his competition. Trump wrote this on Truth Social last night. Such an honor. I just broke the all-time record for votes cast, both sides, Democrat and Republican, in the history of the New Hampshire primary. Well, Nikki Haley says she remains committed to this race. She is turning her attention now to South Carolina. Carolina, that primary happening next month. In February, RNC Chair Ronna McDaniel telling Haley it's time to drop out of the race. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, great to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Your thoughts on Trump's victory last night? Well, look, Maria, it was a big win. And what it has demonstrated is that the Republican Party is firmly behind Donald Trump. Let's really look deep into what happened last night in New Hampshire. Number one, obviously, Donald Trump beats Nikki Haley by double digits. But look closer. The votes that Nikki Haley got in New Hampshire are primarily primarily from Democrat voters and people who basically call themselves independent for that race. So when you peel that back and you start looking ahead, Nevada, South Carolina, Florida, you see that in those contests where, where Republican voters are going to be the overwhelming size of portion of the electorate, she doesn't have a path to victory. Uh, it's time for her to get out of this race. Listen, she ran hard from about 2% in the polls to where she is right now, but there is no path to victory. Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. We need to be focused on November. Will, will those people vote for Trump come in November? Look, I've always said about the November. First of all, yes, they will. And let me explain why. The November elections between Joe Biden and Donald Trump will simply be about who did a better job. And it's without question that that is Donald Trump. Name the issue, Maria. Donald Trump did a significantly better job. And the number one and two issue for all voters in this election is the economy and the border. Yeah. And without a doubt, it is Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, all of these indictments uh, have him crisscrossing his calendar from court to campaign. The former president was back, is back in a New York City courtroom today, Congressman. He's expected to testify in the E. Jean Carroll defamation trial. Meanwhile, a Georgia state lawmaker is calling on the special committee to investigate Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis over her alleged relationship with the lawyer that she hired to prosecute Trump. Fox News voter analysis finds more than 60 percent of New Hampshire Republicans felt that the charges against Trump are politically based. Congressman, is that what we're talking about here with all of these uh, trials, potential trials, court dates? I mean, can't he find himself in trial and perhaps even a conviction before the election or no? Well, look, I don't think a conviction is going to happen before the election because with a lot of these cases, these prosecutors have gone rogue. They are playing politics, and now there are being their emotions being stacked up in these cases, which is going to make it very hard. Secondarily, you have the government who wants to fast track cases against Donald Trump. The American people need to ask yeah. themselves why. That is because of the political motivation at the Department of Justice and in some of these uh, pro state prosecutor offices in Georgia and New York. The, the purpose of our justice system is to be proven guilty, not the fact that you're guilty before you go through the trial. They don't want to do that. They want to play politics. And I think as more of this unfolds in front of independent voters in our country, they're going to see how destructive of our of our republic, of our democracy, these cases really are. Yeah. Look, I think Donald Trump's going to be acquitted in the end. But these prosecutors, Jack Smith and the rest, they are playing politics with Lady Justice. It is wrong. It is un-American, and I believe the American people are going to uh, say no to this mess, and Donald Trump's going to be our next president. Well, I agree. People are seeing all of this as political. And isn't it interesting that they want a real speedy trial for Donald Trump? They want him in court, you know, in March. Uh, and yet they sat on the Biden influence peddling uh, speculation for years. How long did it take to actually bring charges against Hunter Biden? And we still haven't seen any charges with the influence peddling and the uh, money laundering that the oversight committee, your committee, tells us about. Hunter is going to appear before the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees now for a private deposition on February 28th. We're learning more about his Hollywood attorney and the so-called sugar brother who keeps giving him money. Kevin Morris transcribed interview before the Oversight Committee. Morris admitted to you and your colleagues that he still holds a stake in Chinese private equity firm Bohai Harvest, which he took over from Hunter in the fall of 2021. 
According to Republicans, Morris also testified that he has started paying Hunter's tax liability after meeting with him at a Biden campaign event in 2019. He loaned him at least $5 million. Morris said he told Hunter that the first Trump impeachment made it an emergency for him to file his taxes. The impeachment was centered around Trump asking Ukraine's president about the Biden's business deals in the country. Congressman, I want to get your take on all of this because it's incredible to me that a guy, Kevin Morris, could meet Hunter Biden and then two weeks later give him five million million dollars. And why did he take the stake in the Chinese uh, private equity firm, Bohai? Well, a couple things. First, I want to talk quickly about the speedy trial aspect that you said, Maria. A speedy trial is for the defendant, not for the government. So when the government's trying to go at warp speed, you know that it's they're up to no good and you know it's fishy business. Now on to Hunter Biden and, and to his sugar brother, as we're going to call him. Look, this is incredibly fishy again. Number one, he has a stake in a Chinese company that he got from Hunter Biden. So you already know this is not above board. The only reason why these stakes are even allowed to exist is because of Hunter Biden's daddy, Joe Biden, the current president of the United States. And number two, if Hunter Biden was lent money to pay his taxes, his tax liability, um, he still owes that money. These loans are ways to skirt the tax code. So Hunter Biden is going to have to pay taxes on this money. Where is he going to get it from? I guess he's going to get it from the influence peddling scheme that Joe Biden has allowed his son and his brother to create off of his name in politics. Yeah. That is why this is so terrible. And you're right, Maria. The Department of Justice was not going to investigate any of this if House Republicans didn't hold the Biden family accountable. We're going to continue our investigations. But this stake in the Chinese uh, company stinks to high heaven because Mr. Morris would have never got it if it wasn't for Hunter Biden. And Hunter Biden would have never been able to make that deal if it wasn't for Joe Biden. Do you think Kevin Morris is working for the Chinese Communist Party? Is that why he's paying all this money and helping Hunter so much? Listen, I don't want to speculate on that. But what I will tell you is, is that there appears to be much public corruption between China and the Biden family. And now you have Kevin Morris, who's a conduit to that. Hmm. There are serious questions that need to be answered here. Okay. And again, at the, at the bedrock of all of this, it's not Hunter Biden. It's Joe Biden, <clears throat> because Joe Biden's influence in our government and in our politics has allowed for all of this to be facilitated. Yeah. That is why we're continuing our investigation. All right, real quick, Congressman, have you gotten the call from President Trump to be his VP? <laughs> uh, no, I have not. Okay. I talked to the president last night. He's in good spirits, though. Big win last night. But look, they're going to make that decision. I, whatever he decides, I'm behind. All it's right. about getting him reelected as president. Congressman, thank you. Good to see you this morning. Byron Donalds joining us this morning. Thank you, sir.